Welcome to the beautiful campus Valrose of Université Côte d'Azur in Nice, France. I'm Christophe Ritzenthaler, the director of SIMPA, and our headquarters are located on this campus. Before I speak uh, more precisely about the use of online technology, let me first introduce you to our association. SIMPA stands for Centre International de Mathématiques Pure et Appliquées. International Center for Pure and Applied Mathematics. It's a French association, a UNESCO II center, and for more than 40 years, it has been promoting international res uh, mathematics research in cooperation with developing countries and contributing to the training of mathematicians in these countries. We have a bunch of activities to do so. We have fellowships for students or young researchers, and we have research in pairs program for more advanced colleagues. But mostly our actions take place directly in developing countries with courses or summer schools. The later gathered during two weeks, mathematicians, uh, lecturers from all around the world and participants either from the host country or from developing countries of the region. It is a lively and eventful event where the participants try to learn as much as possible from the different courses and activities which are there and also from all the people they can meet. You may easily guess that the pandemic had a strong effect on our activities, pushing us to think quickly how to still provide research activities to students in developing countries. In a difficult context, where our colleagues had already to face uh, difficulties at home, in their own institutes, with online teaching, where a big portion of their social life was also online, we had the chance that they valued our activities enough yet to spend a bit on the, of their free time to help us teaching online. So I would like to thank them again here. And thanks to them we were able to organize during 2021 18 SIMPA schools, either hybrid or online, seven online courses, and to support 14 uh, students to come to short uh, thematic semesters remotely. I will describe shortly what we got out of these experiences. I will tell you the pro and the cons of the use of online technologies, and also the issues and the solution we found. From time to time, it will be slightly technical, but I think really that the success of the failure of the use of online technology depends on how you handle details. One obvious issue is the lack of a proper environment for online teaching. I mean it first at a material level, a bad connection, a bad camera, a bad sound system. It may come as a surprise that the situation is not at all bad in all developing countries. In some of them, or at least in some institutes uh, inside these countries, sometimes the equipment was amazing. And when it was not, we were able to either provide to individuals or institutes uh, small equipment like a headphone or a camera or webcam to help them. Unfortunately, in some cases, uh, either the transfer cost was really expensive or at least as expensive as the product itself or the delivery time was very long and even sometimes the product got lost. But still I think that the organizers and the participants really appreciated that we paid for something as they could see that we were, were putting a value to something that otherwise as an online event would be priceless. But most of all, a proper environment means something different. When we go to a conference or when we go to a remote place to work with colleagues, what we are really looking for is a place away from our daily life occupation. We are looking at a place where we can concentrate on mathematics because the rest, like food, accommodation, is provided to us. So this is why, without surprise, the students who benefit the most from our activities were the ones who were able to be on at the research centers when they were listening to online teaching. At the speaker's level, there are also obvious, obvious challenges. I guess, I mean, even if we become we more and more agile to use all this online technology as notepads, there is still one main difficulty, which is the lack of feedback. Indeed, when you teach in a normal classroom, 
You can analyze some subtle body language to see that maybe your pace is not adequate or that maybe the students are lacking some background to understand your course. When you teach online, most of the time the student's camera is off and you don't have this feedback. And this is a difficult problem because if the student camera is off, it can be because the connection is not good enough, but it can be also because their living conditions are not good enough. And this even applied to some students in developed countries. Hence, I think that this is a major problem because teaching in front of empty screens is really difficult. And I guess this is also one of the main reasons why some of our colleagues have a deep aversion for uh, online teaching. For this, I would recommend as a solution, as a partial solution maybe, that whenever possible you have at least a small group of students with the professor on site to help him recreate a kind of normal environment. Also being a teacher is more than just a voice and a writing, it is a kind of performance. This is why whenever possible we provide our uh, lecturers with a professional environment similar to a classroom. As you can see here, we have designed a room with two blackboards, professional camera for filming, um, interactive uh, screen and also a very good sound system. I see several advantages in the use of online technologies. First, it helps us factoring our actions toward various groups simultaneously. We had, for instance, some schools or courses with more than 100 participants from all around the world. We can also continue our activities even when there is an obstacle to travel. It can be, of course, a pandemic, it can be security reasons, it can be budget cut, or it can be just random incidents. For instance, we had a lecturer who could not go to a school because of some visa issues. Third, and also very important, well, we can reduce our uh, carbon footprint and by just replacing non-necessary travels. And fourth, and maybe paradoxically, it can help us being more inclusive because some colleagues or some participants can't travel for some family or professional reasons. But I would like now to speak on another advantage which is independent on the fact that there is an obstacle or not uh, to travel. When I was a student and even now, it was often difficult for me to follow an entire summer school. There is so much content delivered in such a short time. You have to write very well prepared, you have to have the correct background in order to understand all what is going on, otherwise you can get lost in less than 10 minutes. And maybe sometimes you realize too late that the topic is not what you thought it would be. And I'm not alone to think so. We conducted a survey with the participants on, of our schools and we realized that the pace of the school is one of the major difficulties. But I think that online technology can help us extending the duration of our activities. Why our own uh, master students do get the full semesters to study a course? Because when you want to learn something difficult and new, it, it takes time. Of course, it will be also a longer involvement of the lecturer. But I think that with the proper tools, it will not be overwhelming and the satisfaction you will get out of it will be great. Let me take one example to try to illustrate how this philosophy could work. In March 2021, we gathered with Stefano Marseglia and Anna Somoza to record here at SIMPA a series of lectures. Then we shared these lectures, these videos, with some participants that we selected in developing countries. We did it using an open source learning management system that we developed here at SIMPA. It contains two tools. One is a Moodle platform where you can easily share the videos and the content as PDF, for instance, but most of all, it enables us also to enrich the video, so you can, during the video, add questions or comments and keep the students active. 
It has also a chat part based on Zulip. And this chat part is very useful when you want to keep like very smooth exchanges with the students. What is very nice is that it has a phone app. And as you may know, many students in developing countries don't have a personal laptop. So having this um, phone app is really useful, especially as it can take pictures. So if they want, they can easily take a picture of a written sheet of paper and uh, share our, uh, their thoughts or ideas or questions with us. Then during three months, we used this platform and we also uh, gathered live to exchange correct exercises, answer questions and, kind, and keep a kind of human contact. And finally, in August 2021, we are able to gather in Turkey with some of the participants. And we could build on the knowledge that was accumulated to do something that is very difficult to do online only, meaning having small group of research on mathematical topics. So in Wall, it was a very nice uh, experience. What is also very nice is that the materials we have, all these videos can be used with other people and for other purposes if one wishes. For instance, I'm going to reuse part of the videos for another summer school in 2022. All I have to do is open another Zulip chat so I can share the videos with the students, they can ask questions when there are some parts that they don't understand and I can also ask them questions to see and check if they understood the parts I wanted. So obviously what you need is a very nice platform to share all these videos. This is why we created with three other French institutes, CIRM, IHES and IHP, a platform called Carmin.tv. As you can see, it contains many metadata to facilitate the search of the precise video and also you can download the video in high resolution if you want to watch it offline. We hope to add in the future many more functionalities and also other sources of video. If you're interested in the topic, I invite you to watch a video we made during the roundtable for the inauguration of Carmin TV in French.